Nexus Connection begins a new video series involving the discovery that megalithic sites around the world are connected to each other using the summer and winter solstice lines, beginning with a new discovery corroborating the connection of the Channel Islands, California, and the Grand Canyon area. The summer solstice, as seen from my home in Beaumont, California, led me to discoveries around the world, starting with finding that Catalina was called Stonehenge Island, that over 2,700 giant skeletons were unearthed there in the 1920s. I layered a Stonehenge blueprint and found that following the projected path of the summer solstice points precisely to the Grand Canyon, where the solstice led and linked around the earth is what caused me to write a book. Early in 2017, while watching my local weather report on NBC TV, which I prefer because of the accuracy of their topographical maps of Southern California, and especially my area called San Gregonio Pass, which lies between two 12,000 feet mountains, I became aware of an impossible geographical line extending from the San Clemente Island area to the Grand Canyon and beyond. The impossibility of this line is, it has regular features extending across two mountain ranges over 450 miles perfectly straight and seemingly trenched to allow the summer solstice sun from the Grand Canyon to be the sunrise sun of San Clemente, even to providing for the curvature of the earth. But if that weren't enough, it also crosses two te tectonic plates over the San Andreas Fault without an inch of variance. The point it crosses the San Andreas is just west on the mountain where Kitchen Peak is located. The trenching is evident on both sides of the fault line, proving California hasn't moved along the fault since its apparent artificial sol solstice marking was originally surveyed. The clearly visible erosion dates it as incredibly ancient. The mountain of Kitching Peak seems abnormally well placed to disrupt the clashing of continental shelves, effectively forcing earthquakes on the San Andreas to stop at this point and go around the mountain. 2016 map of quakes shows the mountain transferring this energy around it. I wanted to show Kitching Peak as seen from Northeast Bay in California. The area of the ridge just left of the peak is a solstice line crossing. Although you can't see anything anomalous from close, it's clearly visible at altitude. Let's take a tour on the summer solstice line from San Clemente. The artificial regular width of the trench measures approximately two to two and a half miles, and this regularity is maintained all the way to the Grand Canyon. I measured the mountain range closest to the coastline and it shows about two to two and a half miles from peak to peak. Leaving the island, oops, leaving the coastline, we approach the San Clemente Island on a straight line and then zoom in. You can see there's an older runway to the right the whole place is a, a very level section of the island, and that includes the area where the line crosses, where there are markings at the crossing. But I'm not sure if they're there to mark this. I wanted to show the island at a ground view on the solstice orientation. It's a little confusing, but I'll move towards the coast a little bit. And then zoom out. Back to an aerial view. We leave the island where I noticed a huge rectangular structure underwater. The line appears to cross directly over a high point on that structure, and it's possibly a pyramidal shape. And I urge people to view this themselves before Google Earth hides it. There are rectang rectangular features around this structure too. But it's anomalous to sit nonetheless. And from the coastline going inland, you can see just how sparsely populated it is along this solstice line. Over the mountain ridge, it crosses a body of water and this is called Lake Elsinore. And there's some, uh, there's some residential uh, area around it now. Back into a hilly area. Where construction, it's only recently become available. 
see the outliers they have no idea they're actually living on a solstice line and lots of good farmland this is just south of Hemet and again very little population back into a hilly region towards the San Jacinto Mountain area. Great farmland in the area too. It's just beautiful out here. And then it enters the San Gorgonio Pass, just south of where I now live in Beaumont. But what really shocked me was finding out how closely this line crosses to the home I grew up in. Let me just zoom in a bit, move into the, the old town of Banning. Most of the construction, newer construction in Banning, moved west. But I grew up in Old Town. on 3rd Street, no less. And I'll show you a street view of the home I lived in. You can see the line. But let me just give you a street view of the, the house I actually lived in. I have a nice park to the north of that. That's Replier Park. And turn, and that's the home I grew up in for at least uh, 12 years of my life. We zoom back out, move back to the line, and just to the south of that is my elementary school, Central Elementary, right there. But then slightly north of this, it crosses over an old high school gymnasium where my mother actually was able to set the cornerstone in a ceremony. She was the salutatorian of her high school class and won the right. From here, we go back to an aerial view. The line moves across the northeast of Banning and into the Morongo Indian Reservation. And that's an old, uh, that is the gravel works in Banning. It's been there as long as I can remember. And the Morongo Indian tribe has put a uh, big M on one of the hills. I'll zoom in and show you. Right there. And then on to the huge granite mound of Kitching Peak. It's an effective cork for the San Andreas. And as a younger man, I hiked to Kitching Peak and up part, part of the Pacific Crest Trail from Whitewater Canyon. And as we move on, I wanted to uh, show the solstice line from almost a spatial altitude. It's clearly visible, and the erosion too. Turn it on and off for you. And you can see the traces when you're looking. It rivals the Great Wall of China. And I've checked a Ice Age maps, but glaciers didn't form this far south in California. And I believe this line continues at least as far as Navajo Mountain, which seems to lie in a direct path, but I truthfully can't see any similar trenching after it enters the Grand Canyon. And there's the specifics, Navajo Mountain. I wanted to provide a visual North America using an overlay of Stonehenge and the Grand Canyon as the altar stone. The continuance of the American solstice corroborates the Channel Islands in California and the connection to the Grand Canyon area. When a winter solstice line is applied, it moves northwest through Nevada and into Oregon. 
which I hope to show in another video in this series. Traveling southeast on the winter solstice from the Grand Canyon, uh, it leads directly to Marfa, Texas, where I discovered Nazca type lines and geoglyphs. And that is the subject of my book, America's Electric Nazca, Megalithic Marfa, Texas. The seven part YouTube series I call Texas Electric Nazca, which details my historic fly over the Marfa Plateau for photographic validation. And I'll leave you with a view, a part of the plateau all lit up at an altitude of about 15,000 feet. I don't believe in coincidence or the psychology of synchronicity, but I might have a genetic affinity for this particular line, a sort of living compass. I see the hands of creation all over the world, and I see that the ancient builders followed a solstice path. Thank you for your views.